Due to microphone difficulties, some of the following footage has been dubbed over. Hi guys, it's Eric. And Adam. And Corinne. <laughs> and today is... Make Baby Mind Day. Make Baby Mind Day. It's Mick Baby, Baby Monday. Monday. Yes. Yes. It's Make Baby Monday. And today is a very special day because we have... The amazing Corinne here with us. Yay! Hi, <laughs> In case you're just joining us, this is Corinne. This is our surrogate. Also, my sister-in-law, my brother's wife. So, I think the burning question is just the generic, how are you doing? I'm doing great, actually. I'm doing really well. I recovered pretty quickly, and I was surprised with it being twins. Have you felt anything missing? From you, like given that you have had two boys, then like having twins and then like not having them with you, do you feel like incomplete at all right now? No, not at all. Okay. I miss them, but not in the same way that people were like expecting me to miss them. I miss them like they live far away and want to see my nieces, but that's it. So. And do you feel like when they took them out of the OR when after you gave birth? and then they brought them into the room with us, did you feel like you were giving up something of yours? No. Okay. Because they were never mine. <laughs> That's true. That's you, a great like, answer. I've had a lot of people, a lot of friends or even strangers really concerned about that. And I was like, okay, well maybe it's gonna happen. Maybe in a few more weeks, like I don't know. And it hasn't happened at all. And I think it's just because I prepared myself for that. Yeah. yeah. And I also think our situation is different than other surrogates who go through the same thing and they never see them again. This is completely different. I mean, Corinne is in our lives. We talk to her still almost daily, if not daily. Videos, pictures, pictures, pictures yeah. Photos. Yes, She's really it. enjoying the 30 day <laughs> vlogs. She's like, thank God for that because I am get my fix. I just think we as a family just have so much love and that part of the whole like separation is not existing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like we were the home and then like they just took residence in the summer home <laughs> for nine months and then they came home again. Do you know what I mean? Like, they were just on summer vacation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a long nine month summer. Yeah. What are your thoughts when anybody refers to you as the mother? If people do, because we've had a few people that have called you the mother and what would your response be to them. I'm the auntie, not the mom. I just okay. carried them. That's okay. what I mean. That's what I've told people. Yeah. And Corinne has no DNA relationship. Um, that is Julie. That's our egg donor. And we were talking about this earlier, but is it kind of wild that the whole experience was just a month ago? Yes. I was just holding them. I don't know, like an hour ago, and I was like, I can't believe I was like just carrying you, like literally four weeks ago. That's crazy. Yeah. It's so wild because like. Continent. And I saw a picture. I know. Yes, thank you. <laughs> the, continent. the continent was there a month Beautiful ago. It's continent. Kind of crazy to think that it's not now. I don't yeah. know. It seems like it went really fast. So, so for the whole process, because it started back in March when we implanted mm -hmm. the princesses into you, what was the most difficult part of the whole thing? No. I'll rephrase that. What was the worst and the best part of the whole thing? Mm. Good question. Well, morning sickness was pretty crummy. Okay. But 36 to 38 weeks was kind of crummy too. So I don't know which one was worse. If you had yeah. to relive one, like you were forced to relive the morning sickness or 36 to 38, which would you choose? That's a tough question. Morning sickness was like three months. I just love how healthy they were though. So that part was like, the suffering was like worth it. Okay. At the end, for sure. I okay. guess, I guess all the suffering had to be worth it because it was the whole thing, but <laughs> growing up, ooh, okay, that's so not fun. That was the worst, okay. Yeah. So the I best? Hmm. Meeting them. Yeah. I was dying to see them and meet them and just look at their face and hold them. And, and what was them. your first thought when they came out? 
that they're so perfect. So perfect. <laughs> they're like, they're gorgeous. They they're were. beautiful babies. And they still are. Yeah. Yes. As soon as they left the area. <laughs> <laughs> Down under. <laughs> Down under. Uh, they were like instantly just flawless. They were. Yeah. I was expecting like lots of placenta juice just dripping off of them and like. Thank you for the visual. I was I was imagining the skin to skin them just sliding down because they're just so <laughs> moist. <laughs> like, yeah. I do have to say one of my favorite things that you've described or your answer to a lot of people's questions is that um, you're just very very proud, and I think that that is like the perfect word to describe how you feel about the situation. Is that you're just very proud, like the fact that you made it to 38 weeks, the fact that they were so freaking healthy mm -hmm. um i think i just i i tell people that when they're like oh how's corinne i'm like she's doing fantastic and you know she's just an extremely proud aunt and she has every reason to be yes i am pretty proud <laughs> well we're pretty proud of you so. oh my God, completely. <laughs> with everything that happened the whole process would you do it again I would not do it again because I only wanted to do it because it was for you guys. So, uh -huh. and then like, if you wanted me to do it again, I think I'm just going to be way too old by the time you're ready to have more kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're not full for a while. So by then I'm going to be like, who too old, we're but not for not any for other us. reason. Yeah, no, not no. for any other bad reason. I just, I personally don't think I could have been a surrogate for someone that I didn't know. And was it awkward for you at all? Like always having us there and like knowing and being so close to the intended parents that... No, no, not at all. Because for me, like it would have been awkward for me. I don't think it's a bad situation for other people to be a surrogate for people they don't know. But for me, in my heart, that wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to help provide... For someone who... Couldn't have kids that I personally knew. That was what I wanted to do. Okay. So for someone out there, because we've actually had quite a few people who have commented and sent us messages that this journey that we've been on has inspired them to be a surrogate. Um, do you have any advice for them? Like, I wish I would have known this prior or this would have been nice to know going into it. I don't think there's anything that I didn't like anticipate or whatever, but I feel like I really thought about the situation and the scenario and I think communicating it to my boys like really helped I think that's why like emotionally it hasn't been this like really hard thing to give the girls to you guys because I was preparing my heart and my boys hearts for this the whole time so I think that part would be really important for someone who is considering being a surrogate is to make sure that you're like mentally preparing yourself that um you're talking about it with your friends or your family and thinking about like what it's going to be like afterwards so that it doesn't come as a like shocked feeling to you. Totally. That's yeah. one thing that I've noticed too, yeah. is that her boys are like just so excited to go visit their cousins They're and they so talk cute. about their cousins all the time. Mm -hmm. And Lucas like holds that it, it is so awesome to see them and how they react to the girls mm -hmm. and they don't seem phased by it at all. They're like, Yo, my mom's real cool. She carried the two girls. Now they're mm -hmm. like... We just yeah. drove by the hospital on the way coming up here. And Lucas is like, Mommy, that's where you had the babies at. And now we get to go see them. Like, it was just like no big that's deal. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, a couple weeks ago, they were driving up to go to Disneyland. And they surprised the boys going to Disneyland. And they woke up that morning. They're like, guess what we're going to go do today? And they're like, go see our cousins. And they're like, no, we're going to Disneyland. And they were like... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> like disappointed. Yeah. So we did both that day. We got a little compromise with Disneyland, and yeah, yeah. we got to see our cousins. So a year ago, when you came to us and you were saying that you felt being a surrogate was your calling. Mm -hmm. After being a surrogate, do you feel more fulfilled as an individual? And second part of the question: Do you have a new calling? to replace that calling because now it's been completed. Hmm. Um, I don't know if I feel like, yeah, I've done it. Like, I don't know that I feel that way. I feel like a lot of other people have lifted me up and complimented me 
about being a surrogate and saying like, this is the most amazing thing, like strangers. Like we literally just had a waitress hug me at breakfast the other day and was like, you are just like a gift from God. Like that is amazing that you gave that gift to them. And I was like, thank you. Like I was just like in shock because I didn't even know this lady. Um, so I don't know. A lot of other people's responses have like blown me away. I don't think that I was feeling like, yeah, check me out. Look what I did. Like, I don't know. That wasn't <laughs> why I did it. So like, has it hit you though? Like how massive of a thing that you did and like how huge of a heart you have to have to like do that? Like, has it like, I guess a little bit. I don't know. I okay. think like a lot of other people are seeing it not like as more of a big deal that I see it, but just like I don't toot my own horn. That's not the type of person I am. So okay. maybe that's why I'm just like, yay. <laughs> I'm kind of quiet about it. I don't know. So, but it is incredible cool. what you did. <laughs> and it was a long process too, so Yeah. And do you do you feel like a stronger person now going through something like that? I feel like I don't give myself enough credit. For how strong my husband reminds me that I am. Okay. Because there were several times where I would cry, like, I can't do this anymore, I can't do this anymore, when it was really painful near the end, and I was kind of miserable being a continent. <laughs> <laughs> and he would remind me, like, you're like superwoman, you can do this. And I'm like, oh, no. And he's like, no, babe, like, you can, look. You can do anything, so. It's nice to be reminded of that when you don't see it in yourself sometimes. Yeah. And I do have to say, like, piggybacking on all of that, and then the question I asked earlier about, do you have any advice? I think your support system that you had, not only with your husband and two boys, but your friends were, mm -hmm. I think that's an extremely important key component to the success of everything that we went through and Absolutely. how you're doing now and how great you're doing now. Um, I, I just think you need that. And I think anyone who's going to be a surrogate needs that support system, whether it be even like a counselor you can talk to or, you know, a therapist or whatever your outlet might be. I think it's really important to have that because yeah, if you I didn't had, have that, I, I mean, had people texting and calling and checking in with me. I had friends bringing me meals afterwards, people visiting at the hospital. I mean, it was the like outpouring of love was amazing. So this kind of ties in with, you already answered about how giving the girls to us, you didn't feel like a loss as an individual or anything. But now that you are pumping for the girls for breast milk, as a woman, do you feel like it, you're any less of a woman because you're giving up more still? No, not okay. at all. Like, I'm happy that to provide that for them. I wish I could do it for longer. I mean, I'm happy that it'll help them and keep them healthy and yeah. And what are you most excited about now? Now that they the girls are here, what are you I most excited to see about? Them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're so happy to have Corinne here with us. Um, every time we get to see her, you know, it just it fills our hearts because of the whole process that we went through, you know, it was just such a like we were pretty close beforehand, but I think now, like we have this bond that all three of us that even with Mike and your boys, like I don't think, I think that is going to be very, very difficult to break. I think we have this, I, I just, it just connected to us so much more than we ever have been before. Do you mm -hmm. feel closer to us? Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. Totally. Okay. Yeah. Cause there were times where there were months where we wouldn't talk and mm -hmm. now it's like a day goes by and we're like, Hey, I'm a doctor. We, we should call. We should text. And she chews me out if I don't send a picture. She's like, you are on my crap list. What are you doing? Hello, picture. We just, we love it when she visits. We wish we could live closer so we could visit more. And uh, we're just so happy you could come today and share your information and your milk with us. Remember to subscribe and uh, give us a thumbs up and share our journey with your family and friends. And we'll see you guys soon. Three! Three.